call April 15th. <laughs> 2021 meeting of the Airport Commission to order. Roll call. Neil Johnson. Here. Greg Collier. Andrew Barker. Joel Gardner. Present. Steve Smith. Yes. Bill Schoonover. Yes. Micah Thomason. Yes. Okay, approval of December 17th revised minutes and a March 9th. 2021 uh, any questions on the revised minutes what 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 was the revision is uh, uh, Micah uh, there was a comment in there about Micah making a motion that he didn't make okay all right I'll move that they move that they be presented or uh, approved as presented I'll second it second we approve all in favor Aye. 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 Uh, comments from the audience. It from Summit Aviation, Daniel. Hi, right, good afternoon. Good to see everybody. So, recapping on March, uh, if you remember. Uh, last month I mentioned how February was so terrible from all the ice storms and lack of traffic coming through. March was 100% different. It was a great turnaround. U of A did uh, very well with their basketball uh, tournament uh, and what that translated to was a lot of traffic in and out of the airport of all sorts. Um, so great fuel sales. We ended up with 43,646 gallons of jet sold last month and 7,645 and a half gallons of Avgas sold last month. That is many times more than what we're used to, uh, or what we've been used to over the last six months at least. So that was a great change, really enjoyed it, and loved having all the people through. A lot of happy customers, especially with the restaurant being open, had a great positive impact for the, for the terminal, a lot of happy people. And uh, I, I don't think we got a single complaint last month from anything, any part of the airport. Uh, real, couple, real quick, what were those numbers again? Jet A sold. 43,646. Avgas sold was 7,645. Okay. okay. That's not what we purchased, but that's what was sold. Right, right. Uh, I noticed there's a lot, seems like more and more jet traffic parked there through the day, right? Yes, sir. What percentage of those are fueling? 60 to 70 are purchasing fuel when they come through. Is there any reason you may be missing some that you could do to pick up more and more of that? So we, we try, we've got some incentives that we are pushing uh, for a lot of the transients that are coming in from across the country, such as, um, well, one example is we've got a deal with Hertz rental car. Um, if somebody comes in and purchases 150 gallons of jet fuel, we will pay for $50 of one of their rental cars. Um, if they get 250 gallons, then we'll pay for $50 of two rental cars. And uh, we've had a number of people take, take that offer up. And uh, just the other day, we had somebody um, who didn't realize we had that. I let them know before they arrived that we were pushing that, and they decided to take 150 gallons. So there's 150 extra sold that if we didn't have that offer or I hadn't thought about it, it wouldn't have been done. Um, but other ways, we're trying just to have good relationships with everybody coming in, especially as people are starting to fly a little bit more. A lot of our base guys are getting back out and getting their business done as they need, so it's good to see those guys going back up too. Okay. Is and there still a crew car available, you know, a courtesy car? We have two courtesy cars. Um, we've got our Durango, our SUV, and then we also, again, through Hertz, the relationship we have with Hertz, they have given us a Cadillac to use as a courtesy car. And so customers are extremely happy with that. It's very comfortable. It's a brand new car. Um, and that's going down really well with people. And that's another incentive for fuel purchase. We only allow people who purchase fuel at no minimums to use a courtesy car. And that worked for us today. We didn't, somebody came in, didn't need fuel, but we said it's available as a fuel purchase, purchase. And they said, you know what, go ahead and do 10 aside. And there's 20 gallons of Avgas sold for us. Two things, uh, or one more thing I, I do want to bring up. I know Laura's been working uh, hard to try and get this resolved, but we've been having some, some fuel farm issues. Um, we've got a leak in uh, our Avgas pump that uh, unfortunately means my money is evaporating. 
Uh, it's a slow leak. It's not significant. It's a drip every minute or so. But it's been for about two months now, and, and we haven't been able to, to get that resolved. Somebody's tried to fix it, but not much, not much of a result. And then one of our jet pumps has gone down, so we're using the secondary jet pump. And that's a lot slower process. It went from taking 45 minutes to offload 8,000 gallons of fuel to now it takes two hours to offload. And uh, so that's, it's an inconvenience. It's, it's not stopping us in any way, but it is an inconvenience. And that's there in the fuel farm itself. Yes, sir. That's ours, right? Right. And like I said, Laura's been getting in touch with them, but they, SoCo doesn't it seem is, to be. It is our maintenance responsibility, is it not, Laura? Yeah. What I would say to that, just real quickly, is uh, we have our maintenance program, of course, is set up to the maintenance department. And I would, I would think if that we need anything from the commission, such as funds or anything to replace a pump or anything, I would think Laura would be bringing it mm -hmm. to us. Right, right. That, you know. yeah. So that would be the way that, that we should address that. So the broken pump, that's yours, though? No, no, sir. That's ours as well? Correct. The, okay, so we need we, to get our pump fixed, and we're working on a leak, both. They they were looking on getting quotes on a new pump, and then they've gone through selling, or someone was buying out the business, so I think they've had some turnover through them, and I, I call them all every week at least, once, twice a week <laughs> sometimes. And we, really, they just can't call them. we don't even know what the cost is yet on this yeah. repair. Okay. Small things I can handle. Fort Smith, so I can't just go there either. Right. So, so the, the, the leak, is that in a situation where we're going to have to run gas, run the have gas down, or is this in a part of the system where it's not going to? No, we can isolate the pump. Okay. Isolate, drain and the fix section. It and and, fix okay, it. Okay. So without having to drain anything, yeah. so you can still maintain your volumes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once we have the part, it's a two-hour fix. So, but little things, you know, we take care of. I had to replace an O-ring and a, and a hand pump the other day. That was, that was no problem. I'm happy to do that. So, but anyway, I wanted to bring it up, and I'll stop complaining now. <laughs> so, unless there's anything else, that's all I've got. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Report from Ernest. I don't really have a lot to add. I don't really have a lot to add this month. I haven't heard anything from Mr. Mann nor his attorney, so we're still pursuing our judgment that we've already obtained. And we finally got uh, service by, by uh, warning order on the prior restaurant oc occupier. So we'll be filing a default judgment on that once I get proof in the newspaper that they published it. And that's, that's where we are. Any questions? Still working on it? Red iron's still on the ground out there? Yes. Yeah. Nothing's changed. Ernest, is there any timeline on this Jeff Mann situation or, you know, the, well, as far as going forward, you know, how much we, longer we have to wait? We, we gave him a timeline and he did not respond. Uh, it was told that he was going to, but he didn't. So we already, like I said, we already have one judgment that uh, we have remedies that we can enforce on that. And then the other part, um, we, we still have that hanging out there to deal with as well, but no, there's no, there's no, uh, we've, we've been over backwards in my opinion. This commission has been over backwards. Well, how much liberty can we take with that steel out there? Is that ours at this point? Is it something we can well, need to store or is it? I, I posed that question to the attorney because of the concern that the chairman had about the, the bankruptcy and, um, <clears throat> That um, I mean, just I don't want to say too much, but that I don't think we'll have an issue with that. I'll just leave it at that. So hopefully by next month I'll have more to tell you about that. But nothing's changed on the ground as far as any of that goes. So and by next this time next month we also should have a judgment against the prior. So if we proceed with doing something with that, then. That put the shoe on the other foot as far as it, telling us that we're either in violate or wrong or right or whatever. Right. In other words, so if we want, if we had an opportunity to do something with it, we could just move forward with, with that risk of just 
then they would have to come back and say, you guys did something. That's Basically. pretty much where we are, yes. Makes sense. Okay, so one more month then, and maybe we'll you know, be in a position to, to, to try to get something finalized or, you know. On that part, keep, yeah, yeah we on have, that part we have, we have a judgment on another part, but there's different parts to this, different entities. Some were just him, some were his company. So the ones that were individual, we've already got a judgment on that. It's the one with the company that filed bankruptcy is the one that we're still dealing with. They will look forward for next month then for more information. Okay. And both of the both of the minutes that we approved today, both of those have. He was supposed to contact us. He said he would, yep. but he didn't. So yep. this is like the reoccurring theme for him. So. In fact, there was one meeting when you, there, one of the meetings you extended a gracious offer. The next meeting he hadn't complied, so you put a deadline on it. That was communicated to him. It was responded to me that he would comply with that, but he didn't. So you're right. <clears throat> so I take it, should we have something working on that, we should proceed with it at this point? Yep. Or start thinking about what we're going to charge him for occupying our space and tying it up because we could have rent coming in here. This is our properties. If it were an empty a house that we were evicted him from and he had materials left in there, we'd be charging rent because we can't rent it to the next person. So well, when, where the obligation start, stop the we him paying the land yeah, lease, not. but the land lease is part of that bankruptcy and everything I would imagine. It was, they had actually filed a motion in the bankruptcy to assume the lease that we had terminated before the bankruptcy was filed. They since um, withdrew that. So that's where we are now. Because we, we opposed it, of course. Of course. And then they withdrew it, thinking that, I think their assumption was that something could be worked out, and we came back with the offer that you all graciously, but they didn't live up to their end, and then now they're, now they're stuck without that remedy, so. Well, we've got a slab there and everything that we could just proceed with, with putting feelers out there, see if anyone's interested, and see what kind of a deal we could get an offer on or whatever and then address it from there. But I, I, I'm pretty confident we don't have any risk in that. I think it's time we bury the hatchet on this one and move forward. Pardon me? I say I think it's time we bury the hatchet on this one and move forward. What we were talking yeah. about. Yes, uh-huh, exactly. Another way of putting what, what I said. I yes, uh, we don't have anything that I'm aware of working on that right now because we've been, we've been sitting on hold, you know. Because we couldn't we couldn't do anything, yeah. We could just say, okay, we're comfortable moving on. Don't you agree? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, certainly, if anybody if come up with anything before next meeting, if James or Laura, you get any inquiries, you understand what the posi position is at this point, we can just move forward on them. So you'd be willing to lease that out? We can go back to the program. Yes, the ground lease program and build the hangar. We may want to do it ourselves. We may want to build it ourselves. And uh, I've had I've had many inquiries on it over the months. Now you know you've got a little bit more tools to work with. And Adam, if we if we wanted to assume that, Adam, would we have what would we do? Like, are we able to build on a slab that Mr. Mann built? I would say you should be able to if we could figure out, you know, what the design of the slab was to make sure the hangar would meet it. But Greg was just telling me he saw on the the last ADA commission meeting that they actually had a hangar grant get approved for building a hangar on an existing foundation. So, I mean, that's a possibility if, if you feel comfortable that you can assume the foundation, we can see what the foundation was and know what the hangar that was designed to go on top of it, then, then yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. I think the city's engineering department was the ones doing the inspections out there. I mean, showing so, maybe when. Yeah, I'm sure they probably have building plans somewhere. They had to have a permit to go to get to where they're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, which they got through us, at, well, yeah. not through the engineering department. I think that one was going to be like a six bay hangar or something like that, sure. the one that the foundations poured for. It was like a six bay clear span, so 40 by 40 or 50 by 50 bay, something like that, if I remember the old schematic. So. But we've got to do it in the right order. We learned in the last meeting that if we don't have someone set up for it, grants aren't going to happen. So we've got to kind of have a person wanting to get that space and then work our way back through the process, right? Well, you're talking about on the east side? Either no. side. If, if they're not, they don't care east or west, it doesn't matter to them. If we don't have somebody wanting that hangar space and kind of lined up for it, they're not going to let us do any we're you know going to have a conversation on that here and item one of the items okay. we're going to talk about that in in depth here in a moment and it'll include what you're talking about uh <clears throat> airport operations laura uh they came out monday and they were going to start painting on that localizer because there's fresh wood on it that they waited the four or five months for that to dry out and they were going to start that Monday. I don't know how far they got because of the rain came on Tuesday. And so at least that's, that's going to be done here hopefully soon. So that'll all be white and orange again. Um, two of the hangar doors, the ones that we had contract painted last fall have developed some peeling on it. So I've been in touch with the painter to get him back out and he's been booked up. So I'm waiting on him to come back out to get those doors fixed. Air traffic's up, like Daniel was saying, which is good to see. All the all the hangers had, were rented until this morning. I got notice one person wants out of their hangar, so I should be able to get that rented in no time. And we have one office there for rent on Powell Street, and the restaurant's been doing really good. So everything's you know, we're getting ready to start mowing out there full time. <laughs> uh, they've been working on that. The retention pond up on the northwest corner we've had a couple of contractors up there digging holes checking the dirt underneath to see and hopefully in a few months that'll be getting underway and i think they have a 120 day timeline or six months maybe from start to finish on that so hopefully that'll be finished up by fall and that'll be draining properly and keep downtown from flooding and hopefully no wildlife will come and <laughs> make home out there Laura, have we had very many tenants leave for whatever reason? Has, has there been much turnover? I know no, we've got a, a, a good waiting list, but we don't hear too often no, that anybody's even you know, left. It seems like I'll get like two or three in a month or two period of time, and then I go three months with nothing. So, But you know, people, most of them have just been selling their airplanes, getting out of flying or for whatever reason. Because they're, they're not going anywhere else. And our, our waiting list is still healthy. 67, I think. How many? 67, I believe, is the number. Okay. Today. All right. That's, so. that's good information to, to have. If you went through and called those 67, how many of them would probably not be interested at this time? Have they been Maybe on Maybe just long? a handful. Yeah. While we're on this hangar, lease. Subject, uh, is there, did anybody else get a copy of this letter from Zach Colder? Bieler, have the only one. I'll read it to you. Good afternoon, I'm requesting approval oh from the Airport Commission to transfer the ground lease under Rise Adventure Incorporated for the hangar I built at 701 Airport Avenue uh, at Springdale Municipal Airport to Brock Posey with the Southern Brothers Construction. He will put it in an LLC that he owns. So all they're asking us for is our blessing on this, uh, him transferring the ground lease, and we approve that, which he has to do before he <coughs> sell that hangar. And I, I am on the line if anybody has any questions. Okay, Zach, where you? He's online on telephone. Okay. So he's with us but on telephone. Anybody have any questions? How much time's left on the lease? Uh, it's right at 25 years um, on the ground lease. I have no problems. 
anybody have any problems with it? If not, we'll just we'll entertain a motion to uh, approve so, it. I want to make sure we're clear with them on the, I mean, obviously you've told him about the annual fee that we charge for the uh, post 9-11 charges, right? That's the issue we have every year with collecting that. And this would be subject to that, that expense. It's on the. No, he's actually inside the airport. Okay, never mind. He's inside <clears throat> over there by Powell Street. I'll make a motion that we approve. We're perfectly fine with that, that happening, so. Okay, a motion that we approve the ground lease being transferred. Transferred from uh, Horizon Ventures to uh, Brock Posey with Southern Brothers Construction. Okay. Second. Motion to second that we approve this transfer. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Zach, you're good to go. Uh, All right, thank you. And I'll, uh, when the deal closes, um, I'll let you guys know just so everybody's aware. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. <clears throat> Airport activity, Wyman. Uh, and in this, are, you, are we going to be talking about all the FAA grants we've got? All of them. All of them. Are you turned on? We're at the highest level of airport operations we've had in 31 months. <clears throat> A. Wyman, on that uh, FAA grant for the 50000 for that's for the tower operations, and is that for moving forward, or, is that, or could that actually be done in arrears like some of the COVID funding has been done in the past? Okay. Tower for contract tower, which means we're going to free up that much money in our budget. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. So it's contracting for the tower, and what's the other part? So there's two pieces to it. What's the other piece? The other piece uh, had a long list of things it was eligible for, basically any kind of maintenance at the airport. Like this pump and stuff, we can use that. Nice. The last one we got, the grant we got with, is the one that we used to paint all those hangers with. So we've got one or two that probably need painting. So the total is 57. What percentage of that is on which side of that? About 30 something thousand, of it, I think, was for contract tower. Okay. So we have 27,000 to work with for maintenance. Well, we could actually use all of it for maintenance because we already got the money in our budget to cover the contract tower and it will free that money up. Okay. And was there a restricted match to go with it at 80, 20, 90, 10? No match. Outstanding. 
wh wh when are these funds available? You know, do we need to start looking right now for projects? What, what's our timeline on this? I accepted the grant today. So the money's available now. Outstanding. While we're on this maintenance, uh, looking or trying to remember back, Laura, I, I don't know if you would would know, but James should know or Wyman should know. Did we not at one point set a, put a limit on maintenance out of that department without coming back to the commission? Did we ever do that? Or if we didn't, should we do that? I know at one time we put a a spending limit on the chairman could spend fifteen hundred dollars without asking the the commission for it, and I'm wondering if we shouldn't uh, for where we have a high and a low both on maintenance routine maintenance <coughs> where it would automatically be done out of a maintenance department without having to come back. I I don't remember when we did it to 14 or 15 since 2014 2015 we had that discussion and we set a limit on it but I don't remember what the limit was I remember doing that it's not been in the last year or three years it's been further back than that but we did have a limit thinking we had that set and that would be something to find out and if we don't have it we need to do it in my opinion critical I look at how fast it needs to be repaired. If it's something critical to be repaired, I want to be repaired quick. Yeah. If, if it's not, I, I believe involving the commission in maintenance as much as I can, depending on what's going on, they start having decisions. I'm not really concerned about how critical the repair is, it needs to be made. I just don't know if we have a real true guideline on that. I can look back through old minutes and see if I can find that. We, I don't know we discussed it. I remember us passing something with it. I just don't remember the dollar amount or if there were rules with emergency versus just normal expenditures. I think we had a couple high, high fees. I brought them up. High things on the itemized how we had spent money and we asked questions and there were some questions on it and that's when we brought that up and we discussed it. But it's been, that's been a long time ago. And, and Laura, with this this grant that we've got, you should think about it and come up with some ideas for us on it because if there's something to make your life a lot easier or something that we could, like, you, we don't offer this very often. So, yeah. <laughs> then Millie talked to James. Where are we on our painting out there? I, I know, are there a few hangers that, that we should give some attention to just with the thought of this money? Probably the only ones that. We've got the tea hangers that are all still shades of blue. They all look okay. The two, the ones that are the worst are nine and 10 because they're right up there close to the terminal and they're the, our big ones. We should get a quote on painting those? No, 10A and 10B, not nine. Been 10A, 10B. And, and they're close to the terminal. I mean, visible to, you yes, know. They're the large, our large hangers up there. Well, can this money not also be used on some of the projects that were, does it have to be used on maintenance or can it be used on projects? Okay. And we certainly will need it for maintenance too. You know, I'm just curious. Uh, So can this be our 20% match on a closing in T-hangers? Like we can, I think we could close in a lot for that if we're doing only 20%, if we can get grants. There's Sorry. a demand for it. That'd be capital improvement. How, how do you look at that? Painting it, they consider just maintenance. Just maintenance. But building a hangar or, or improving a hangar would be capital improvement. And painting should be maintenance. Yep. 
I'll bet you we can find that much maintenance on that airport. You know? I think the HVAC, you know, research that. I think that's a, a, a good thought. We'll see what we come back with next month. Yeah. So do you want her to get bids on painting 10A and 10B? Do we not have, we don't have, we have a we good idea. Have, we, yeah, we can get bids on it. Yeah, they did. We itemized those last year, so I mean, within a small yeah. If you'll bring amount, those, sure if, you, be, if you'll bring those, yeah. we can maybe we can get that done. And if the HVAC stuff, are, are we already getting estimates on it? On what? What's the problem with it? Question. I think, I think just the general age of it. Oh yes. So it's not it's not dysfunctional. It's just older. Where on the yeah. on the terminal building? Mm -hmm. We had some work done. Part of that are, out those there are fairly new, out there, I think. Okay. I, I don't, okay. You're, you're in a much better spot than we are at knowing what we need to do. So if you, if you come up with some plans for us. Fuel island painting. I know one, I know definitely if we have food, uh, uh, issues with that fuel farm, we ought to give that top priority, in my opinion. So we might look at that and see what, what else we might need coming up or whatever and bring that in also uh, what about do we need let's go ahead and address the uh, red on the grounds where we're at where we stopped last month on the hangar Grants and uh, infrastructure on the east side and and uh, availability of a sure. hangar. And maybe before I even get into that, just want to make sure you're aware. So, obviously, you got the CARES grant that came through sixty nine thousand last year. The one you're talking about, the two part one, that was actually passed in December. Then there's the ARRA. I think it was the one that was passed in March. You have not gotten that COVID relief grant yet. We think it's going to be around sixty or seventy thousand dollars. For y'all as well so as you're thinking about stipulations on spending it what are we it, it's basically try to use it on things that are going to control the virus so but it's it's pretty loose language it hasn't all come out yet but that's what we're hearing i think it's going to be like a lot of other ones you can use it for operations maintenance i know a lot of airports are basically using that money to pay salaries and things like that which just frees up that money for other things so i mean i think the fa has been pretty explicit it says if you want to use it for capital projects use that money to pay for salary and then use the salary money to pay for capital projects that kind of way of going about it but they do look at what you draw down that money for so you want to make sure you are asking for that money to pay for what they ask you to so but i just want to make sure y'all were aware that piece is coming we hope to have that information this week but we're getting kind of close to the end of the week as soon as i know i'll route it through everybody so you know what that bill looks like too so back to your original question neil so thought it would be good just to do a, a quick recap of the hangar project because it's been a long time since, uh, should say a long time since we started it. So back last summer, um, once that CARES Act was released, we found out that FA was covering grants 100%. The state usually covers 10% of grants. So we came to you and told you that and said there may be some state funding a year from now to get some state projects going because the state's not having to match FA grants uh, in last fiscal year. Just a heads up, that same ARRA bill that was passed in March did the same thing for this fiscal year FA grants. This year's grants are also 100%. So that's two years in a row now the state is not matching FA grants. And that's usually about three million bucks out of their um, grant program a year just matching state grants. So again, there, I do expect that there is money at the state level to get some projects done. So you asked us to come back with some hangar, possible hangar projects. We bought you some maps across the airport. Y'all landed on the east side, north of that last northeast hangar, which was going to be about a, a shade over a million dollars of development cost. And we thought we could probably capture about half a million state funds to do that development. So we designed that thing all last fall, started going through the LSD process with the city, large scale development, and then a hangar developer came in and wanted to build a hangar a different size than the one we had designed for you that would be a city owned hangar. And so, uh, we were asked to pull the application. We pulled that application so his application could go through. We bid all the site work for the hangar. We got bids in that in December. 
And then we put together those two grant applications to the state based on those bids to do all the site work, all the utilities where you could put a hangar right there. Uh, and I think we were trying to get about 400000 in state grant funds to do that work. And then that's when the state came back and said, hey, we really want to see a land lease or something that there's a tenant that's going to build here before we give you that 400000 to build an apron. You just don't want to sit vacant for too long. And so that's kind of the update we gave you last month uh, at the meeting. And I know Laura's been actively trying to find a tenant. We sent the map to someone just today that has inquired about building a hangar there. Um, I keep the state apprised of where we are. I talk to them about every two weeks, just say we're looking, we're trying to find someone. So they're holding the application right now. We did get the contractor, which is APEC, to agree to hold their bids all the way through May. For now, we can ask for another extension if we need to, which would give you another month and a half or so to try to find that tenant um, if that's what you so, if that's the direction you want us to keep pushing, is to try to find the tenant, they'll sign a land lease, give that to the state, and then they'll give you the money to build the apron, and the tenant can do the hangar under a land lease. So that is where we are today, but happy to answer any questions on that. I've got one. Yes, sir. Did we have a tenant when we moved forward with the infrastructure grant application? Did we have a tenant when we moved forward with that grant? initially move forward with the grant application mm -hmm. for the infrastructure. Did we have a tenant? So that would be back in December. My dates are fuzzy. I'm not sure when it was the meeting where we all decided to not do the lease. That was December. That was December. And so, yeah, I think we submitted it. And then um, y'all had the meeting and said, we don't want to do that. So we told the state, hey, this is no longer uh, going to happen. And that's when they said, hey, let's hold until we have a tenant in place. So I'm confused. Mm -hmm. We did, we had, Bill was the tenant when we made the application for the infrastructure? Right, yes. The, he was in the picture at that he time? He was in the picture at that time, yes, sir. Yep. But we didn't have a land lease. That was what we were supposed to sign in December, was the land lease with him. And then he had the contingencies with the stuff yeah. that. Where, before Bill, mm -hmm. uh, did we have a com what assumption were we operating on that we could go ahead and do it? This was before Bill came in the picture. He came in after the the project was already in motion. Right. So the original, yeah, the original plan was a city-owned hangar. That's so right. that's what we were designing. And that's my yeah. question: is what commitment did we have from the city at that time that they would help us build a hangar? Or how much would they need? We need and all of that. Yeah. If we went back, if we went back today, to where we were at, at that point, mm -hmm. what would be the picture? Yeah, so it would have been a project that's 1.1 million dollars. We thought we could get a half million in grant funds, which we're pretty close to, and the city was going to cover the rest of that funding to make the and, project happen. And we, I'm trying to remember, mm -hmm. did we move forward thinking we had a commitment, or we we did not have a commit. We did not have a commitment, but. We, at the time, there, were, there was lots of information coming out that there was going to be a lot of money released by both the federal and state to help airports. So our plan was to have an application ready to roll, ready to go at the very beginning. We wanted to plan the project and have everything planned for a city-owned hangar so that if that happened, we could be first in line. We even, like that decision was made in like September, October. September we started that process in October we kind of had it started and our plan was to hold it not and, and to submit it in December because there's not a December meeting so that we would have the additional funds from December and January from the state so we could we could actually present that in January so then it was in October after we kind of started that process that that Mr. Adams started working with Ernest and Wyman to work on that the project together so we never had anyone agreed to do it our hope was that we would be first in line when big grants came and we were hoping there'd be a grant that would line up and if not then our plan was to go ahead and use what we could get from the state to develop the the initial setup for it so that if a grant came in the future our, I mean at that point there were grants coming constantly so our, our, my thinking and when I pushed this was that if a grant comes and they say, we've got a million dollars we want to give to an airport to develop an airport, that we would be first in line and have a plan together and not be working backwards on it. Well, at what point did we spend the money on engineering? 
I think we signed our contract with you. You gave us approval in August time frame, I think. It was around that's that where, same time. That's where I'm going with this. What commitments did we have at that point? Because we, we thought we were pretty good shape to go ahead and give uh, the engineers a go on it because we knew we were spending money at that point. I think it was a similar climate as it is right now where he's telling us that they're not spending the three million dollars to match funds this year so we think there's going to be money and our hope was that we would be able to get all of it from the state but if not I, I, we had no commitment we were just simply forecasting that we would have the funds coming so yeah we we stepped too far there moving forward though and let's say we want to do the project and we we have some interested parties but in the case that we don't, uh, in the case we don't come up with an individual, we want to do it. Mm -hmm. City project. Yeah, I think if the grant funds are like they are today, there's some options. So you, you still have a package with the state asking for $400,000 for the site work. Remember, their fiscal year rolls over in July. And so there's opportunities for more grants in July. Lots of things could happen with this extra state money. They could change the grant program, make the caps higher. Let's say if they didn't make the caps higher, you could ask for another grant in July, which would be a third grant now. I know it's getting up there for up to $250,000 to help with a hanger as well. And so I probably want to have y'all meet with the state or have someone talk to the state with us to see if they like that idea of, hey, We'll give the grant to Springdale, these two grants for Springdale in June to do the site work, and then we'll give them another grant in July for the hangar, but you still have to come up with the matching piece for the hangar, uh, even in that scenario. I, I'm just going to give away the farm right here for <laughs> what I'm thinking. What would we have in our hands to take to the city right now and say, hey, how much can you help us with? Oh, we if could. If any, or. Yeah all none or whatever mm -hmm. but to go ahead and set this thing in motion find out we've and not hope not mm -hmm. wish and all that but we have something concrete to go to the city and say here's what we've got mm -hmm. here's what we can do here's what it's going to cost yeah and how hard is it to put that package together oh, in can... a very simple outline for yep. We can have it to you first and next week. I mean, we've pretty much got it all ready. Just need to put a, a number to the hangar footprint itself, uh, and then we could give it to you. And we could we could even give it to you and say, let's assume there's no possible grant for the hangar next year. The city has to pay for all of it. And then if we can get a grant, maybe we can get two hundred fifty thousand dollars extra out of the state. I'd want that in the package so mm -hmm. that we we're presenting that to the city, saying, this is what we have planned. This is what we've got on hold the 400,000 for the large scale development this is what it would cost us to build it these are grants that we think are out there that there's a very good potential we could get can the city commit and then if if we can't get the grants the city backs us that way we can have I would rather go and get a definite commitment and not, and not play this game of if if this comes available naturally if it all comes available we're in a lot better shape and we can go back and say we don't need it and we'll move on to another project or something like that. You know, we can, I mean, we're gonna be able to do it without assistance. Uh, similar to the way we did the, uh, the terminal building. Uh, we, we took that by the horns and just went as, we didn't know exactly what was gonna come out of it, but they worked with us and we made it happen. And I'm just saying, we, we, if we know exactly where we stand today and how much money we would need to put up whatever hangar we decide, mm -hmm. we go ahead and with the state grants and then what assistance we would need from the city in order to make it happen of what we want, irregardless what happened down the road. I mean, we can always take advantage of that. But what would we have to do? In a, it would be the worst case scenario, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, is, is where we would be. And I would like to do that. I would love to, uh, to, to get that information and go as quickly as we can and get on the agenda to, whether it be the CIP or whether it be the full council or whatever, but go and, and feel them out on this and just see what can be done. 
Yeah, I'd say we could put a packet together very quickly. Pretty much already have it ready to go. Uh, just need to come up with a new hanger cost, and we'll ask around, see what the recent bid prices have been. That way you know what it looks like. Well, give us the best. Well, we switched that to 100 by 100. Mm -hmm. That's right. And where did we start? Which one? Was it was it? always 100 by 100 was yeah, on 100. that side. Yes, sir. Yeah. You were saying he upgraded. What did he do? He actually he wanted a little smaller and shorter hangers, but oh, he did. He actually went down, not no, up. We want, yep. we want to get it up there where we yep. as tall as possible. Yep. You need a motion or we just do this? I don't need a motion yeah. uh, unless y'all okay. need one to go once I give you the packet to the city council. So. Uh, no. We could uh, we can go to the city council but committee. We go by there. Uh, I know committees. How soon can you? How soon do you think you can get us on their? Agenda? How soon do you think you can get us on their agenda? I have to ask. Colby, hey Colby, do you? Where do you? How do you suggest we go about this? Go to CIP or go to the city council and then work the other way. Well, this year in the budgeting process, we actually eliminated our CIP fund. So we would just be, um, we would just take this to committee. Uh, Wyman, what would you suggest on time frame to bring this to committee? Um, Wyman would have probably better input than I would. Right now, I don't think we know what all the restrictions we're going to have on some of the funds we're getting. And that's some definite needs for funds that we have. And so, risk and failure if you went today. But yeah. what guidelines we've got on some additional funds we're getting, and if that covers the needs that we have, you stand a better chance of getting approval. Design our plans and maybe, what, a month or two months, Kobe? Yeah, I, w I would say if we do the due diligence and find out what regulations are on it. Uh, let me pull my calendar up here. I would say probably the second committee meeting in May. Um, I think the next one is probably too soon to have all those answers done. We can't wait too long because the year ends in June. So you're going to put it put us in a crunch if we wait too long. What's, when, when is that second committee meeting? In May, uh, actually it'd be the 17th of May. That's a Monday? You could go on the 3rd of May to committee, but I, as Wyman was saying, I would just make sure that I had all of the due diligence done. Because it, if not, it's likely to get tabled to another discussion until more information's gathered. So if we had our due diligence, we could do the 3rd of May? You could. Your, your preference would be the 17th, wait another two weeks? I think that'd be the safer play. We should reschedule our meeting until after that then if there's a decision made so that we can be ready for Arkansas money coming available two weeks later, June 1st. Is that a time frame that you can still work in? Yeah, I'd say that, uh, um, keep in mind, we got two applications for the site work already ready to go. So if you give us tell us in May, hey, the city's will back a hangar. We call the state right then and say, hey, state, it's going to pay for the hangar, sign a letter or something saying that this is what the city's going to do. And then we'll get that site work approved in June. And then we'll try to get a state grant again in maybe July for the hangar. But I think going to your point, Neil, maybe at least ask for all the hangers to be funded by the city first. If you get the grant, great. If not, you bet you made the ask for everything on the front end. If that makes sense. If you did go to committee on the 3rd. Uh, 3rd of May. If you, if you were able to get everything together and could go on the 3rd, uh, it had to pass committee on the 3rd and then be voted on by the council on the 11th. Or the 17th would be the next committee meeting and voted by the council on the 25th. So we'll shoot. We'll shoot for the third if we. Yeah, I, 
I tell you, uh, I really feel that this is just too good of a project and too important that we can't get the city to look at it. I'm, that's just my gut feeling because what uh, everything is happening over there right now and uh, have that new road going through a <coughs> Ford and, and everything's happening in the city on that east side. I just think it's uh, time is right. And I, and I would be interested too, not that needs to hop in front of this project, but if you can find the plans for the other side, it's probably worth going ahead and looking at it, getting it in front of a contractor, getting a rough quote of what it would be. That way you know. I, mean, I think it's going to be a year and a half, two years where this money is going to be trickling back to the state because of these 100% FA grants. And so I'd want to have the next one ready to go um, and have a couple options with the state. I think they would lick their chops to put up a hanger on a foundation that's already done um, right. and get a six bay hanger, which I'm sure Laura could fill up in about 10 minutes. So we certainly don't want to stop it. Anyway. I just want, yeah. I'm just wanting to zero in on this and see what we have to do to see if we can make it happen. Chairman, if you're going to put that on the committee for the third, the deadline to have the information submitted is going to be the 29th of April. We have to have our, our request to him on the 29th. It it have to be in to get in the on the agenda. It would have to be in on the 29th. Doable. Could be able to make, do that, gentlemen. Yeah. Okay. Work. And that's for the third of May. Yes. Sir. Okay. Uh. What's your pleasure? Let's, yeah, I'll entertain a motion that we go to the city council with this. I, I would say let him run and develop it. Let's go for it. Making that motion? Is, do we need a motion, or is this just I'm a not general sure what we do. I know it's a consensus. Uh, do a resolution, whatever. I'd like to have something. Uh, in I'll make a motion that we have Garver go ahead and put the plans together for us to get in front of uh, the committee on the 3rd with the hope of uh, City Council on the set 11th. Okay. I'll second. Okay, motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we're going to, you've got your charge. Uh, and again, I forgot how, when did you think you could have that? Next week, was it? Yeah, I'd say earlier next week, I'm just going to call a contractor, just make sure steel prices haven't gone crazy since last fall, and we'll give you a revised number. That way you're conservative. you got a good budget to take with them. Sounds good. All right. If you like, I can have Greg give a quick update on the East Taxway project. Not a whole yep. lot going on, but Greg. Uh, yes, so the Taxway B extension project, uh, like Adam was saying, it's a 100% funded project. Uh, for the design portion of it and it's planned for construction in 2022 was the uh, initial plan um, just to give you a review of what we last talked about last month uh, we submitted the 90 percent plans and specifications for the faa to review so they spent the last month reviewing it we've actually got comments from one group of the faa back that we're going to work on incorporating so that we can get this thing shelved but we're actually waiting for um, another group of the FAA to finish their review on it before we can uh, finally incorporate all the comments and get it shelved. But um, ultimately, uh, we're waiting on the FAA, uh, and then we can get this thing shelved and ready to sign and put up to bid and on the streets uh, whenever we get the go-ahead from the FAA. Uh, however, one uh, drawback is that it is unlikely that this project gets funded this year. It's, it's most likely that it's going to actually go, go ahead and happen and go to construction in 2022. So that's that's been the the understanding that we've gotten from the FAA so far. Sounds good. Any, any questions place? about any of that process or the taxway B extension project? Awesome. Thank you. Okay, uh, Robbie Willis is with us on Zoom. Uh, from the Arkansas General Aviation. We asked him to uh, a meeting just to give us an update on how we're coming along and the benefits of his program and things of that nature. So I'll, I'll let him address that. You bet. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you. Can everybody hear me and see me? Yes. 
Okay, great. <clears throat> I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. Um, I'm uh, Robbie Wills. I'm the uh, uh, volunteer president of the Arkansas General mm -hmm. Aviation Association. I believe I met uh, most of you back in 2019 when uh, when you guys were kind enough to join our association. And and uh, 2020 has been a huge challenge for all of us. Uh, I'll just put it to you this way: I, um, uh, you know, it, it's we've been trying to hang on for dear life. I think we've done a, a as good a job as any uh, nonprofit um, advocacy organization has done in this climate. And it's thanks to uh, to our members. So I, I want to start off by by thanking you guys for hanging in there with us. Uh, 2020 did not go as we had hoped in terms of our uh, ability to get out and recruit new members, but we were able to hold our association together, put a legislative package together, and I'm happy to, to give you a report today of the success that the association has had. Um, I, I'll just put it to you this way. I'm, I'm a lobbyist and the legislature is in session. I feel like an accountant does the night before the tax deadline, and this started in in early January, and it's been like that pretty much every day. But uh, my uh, my firm, WSG Consulting, is is uh, we're a pretty large lobbying firm. Arga is one of our clients, and uh, we're happy to to be able to report that uh, a bill that we wrote, sponsored, and put forth uh, is now an act, and uh, that's Act 142. It was sponsored by Representative Joe Jett. Uh, who's the chairman of the House Revenue and Tax Committee. I'm actually in his office right now. He loaned me his office uh, to do this call. But uh, Representative Jett is a longtime aviator. He was a uh, aeronautics commissioner at one time. One of the issues that our members were bringing to us over the uh, time we've been doing this has to do with the flyaway tax rule. Some of you guys may be aware of this, but uh, a lot of our uh, aviation businesses that, that either buy and sell or fix up and sell aircraft were being hit with, with huge tax bills and penalties on aircraft that, that never even touched the state of Arkansas. They're never here. They just uh, happen to be dealt with by an Arkansas business. So our Department of Finance and Administration was enforcing the uh, sales and use tax uh, on those transactions. And of course, these, these business people weren't collecting those taxes. A lot of times they were on the hook for that. So. Two years ago, we were able to exempt aircraft 9,500 pounds and above from the flyaway tax. And this year we came back because a lot of our members, particularly in Arga, are uh, working on aircraft that are, that are uh, smaller than that. So we've now exempted uh, all aircraft in the state of Arkansas or all uh, transactions in the state of Arkansas from the flyaway tax rule. And that's Act 142. And uh, it, you know, it's not as complicated as, as uh, you know, explaining ADSB or bleed air to a legislator, but it, it, it did take some explaining uh, to your average uh, legislator down here as to why that was important to aviation businesses. So uh, uh, we also have, we had another bill drafted, and this was really our, our big goal and remains our big goal. We had a, a bill drafted to uh, capture the portion of aviation sales tax that's not going to the division of uh, aeronautics for the grants that you know some of which you were discussing before i came on um, a lot of legislators don't realize when you collect sales tax on a gallon of avgas or jet a uh, only about half of that goes back to the airports through the grant program so we, we had a bill drafted to capture the other half of that um, we knew it was going to be a tall order uh, we are uh, hopeful that, uh, so long and short of it is we had to put the bill into interim study. We're going to be looking at this. Our, our uh, chairman, Jet, who's also a board member of the General Aviation Association, is going to help us head up this study to look at what an impact putting all of the sales tax on aviation fuel into the grant program would have on airports and uh, doing things such as building hangars uh, like, like you guys have been talking about. But uh, so, we, you know, we feel like we've had a good legislative session. We created ARGA two and a half years ago to be an advocacy organization because there really wasn't anybody like myself down here at the Capitol every day keeping these issues in front of legislators. And, uh, you know, in this sausage making process that we've got down here, if you're out of sight, you're definitely out of mind. And, uh, you know, I've done everything I can do to kind of promote the uh, ARGA brand down here and uh, keep these issues in front of uh, in front of legislators uh, try to help jerry chisholm and the division of aeronautics in every way that i can uh, we try to take up issues that jerry can't advocate for because you know, he works for the governor and if it's not on the governor's list he can't really uh, get out there on a limb well 
our organization can. So uh, that, that's what we try to do on issues that, that we feel like are going to be good for general aviation. So uh, uh, with that, you know, we held our own in 2020. We weren't able to have our general aviation day annual meeting here at the Capitol in 20 or this year in 21, but we are planning on doing that again next year. Uh, we've got big plans to uh, turn that into an annual, you know, hopefully in the future, some kind of a fly-in event uh, here in Little Rock uh, to come down and have a day of advocacy here at the Capitol uh, where we kind of flood the hallways down here with, with uh, airport operators and pilots and aviation enthusiasts. So um, with that, I, I want to thank you again for, uh, for your membership. Uh, we are proud to have, you know, we've got over 600 pilots, businesses, and airports now that are members of the association. Uh, we try to put out uh, information every week to, to, uh, to our members. And I'll say this, if you're not getting an email from, from me every week, it, it's, I thought I had everyone's email address put in our database, but if you're not getting that, please uh, uh, let uh, Colby know and, and uh, he'll get your email address to me. We'll get you on our list. But uh, we, we try to get information out to everybody every week about events going on. I know the, uh, the event there at the airport uh, that you guys have once a month is on our list uh, every month that we're pushing out to pilots and hopefully getting them to fly in and uh, uh, socialize, buy some food, and uh, fill, up their, uh, fill up their gas tank <laughs> before they fly home. But uh, uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. And again, just appreciate your membership, appreciate the opportunity to visit with you today. Okay, any, any questions from Robbie or Robbie? We, we certainly thank you for that report. We've been sitting here since we've been members. Just want to hear from you what you thought your project was doing for us in general. So uh, I certainly appreciate your time today. Thank you, sir. We're here to help. If you, uh, you guys are, are uh, very well managed and very well uh, represented with uh, Senator Eads and Representative Godfrey, but if you ever need any help, with any of the projects you have on your plate, uh, that's what we're here for. So please call me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You had nothing further, did you, Adam? Okay, any old business. Any comments from the commissioners? I'd, I'd like to make a suggestion that we meet at the airport next month. Uh, we haven't been out there in a long time and just kind of, you know, let's, let, let's visit the airport. Maybe even consider doing something, you know, now that the restaurant's open. And in light of all the construction here in front of the building and the parking and whatnot. So I'd, I'd, I'd just like to put in that request. Anybody have any objection to that? We ought to do it quarterly. I think it's a great idea. Pardon me? I think it's a good idea. Let's I think it is too. Well, let's do it. I'll try to do lunch there beforehand too. I'd like yep. to try the restaurant. Yep. We'll all meet for 12:30 for lunch, and or if we need to meet before that. Do that. Beautiful. Let's do it. Is this pencil mine? We'll, we'll be adjourned then. <laughs>